Flying a multi-engine airplane can open up a world of adventure, from reliable cross-country travel to new career options. This also presents new challenges, since the speeds and altitudes are higher, the systems are more complicated, and the emergency scenarios take more practice. This is Rob Ryder, host of Sporty's Pilot Training Courses. We're glad to have this opportunity to collaborate with the AOPA Air Safety Institute to bring you essential safety-related content from Sporty's multi-engine training course, free of charge. Whether you're new to multi-engine flying or a rusty multi-engine pilot, we trust this series will help you grasp important fundamentals that are key to operating safely in a multi-engine airplane. In this video, we'll cover how to operate safely in the IFR environment after losing an engine. Now, let's take a look at what you'll need to know when an engine quits while flying IFR. In actual IMC, or while training under the hood, your only references for maintaining control of the airplane are the instruments. When an engine quits, you need to quickly and accurately interpret the instruments to determine the appropriate actions. As always, your attitude indicator will give you an indication as to the aircraft's attitude to the horizon. Use it initially to keep the wings level and pitch set as appropriate. Your heading indicator will tell you that yaw is occurring and that the heading of the aircraft is changing. The turn coordinator or turn indicator can give you a quick indication of the direction of the yaw. The rudder required will be the one that is opposite of the turn indication. Use this instrument to stop the yaw and the heading indicator to resume the desired heading. Your airspeed indicator will provide information regarding the adequacy of your pitch attitude. Use the desired airspeed to fine-tune the pitch attitude. Your altimeter will give you an overall indication of how your airplane is performing. Climbs, descents, or level altitudes are important to note. The overall procedures for your initial response to an engine failure under IFR do not change. Only the references used to interpret the situation change. If an engine quits, fly the airplane using the instruments as reference. Establish an airspeed of VYSE or greater. Set the mixtures, props, and throttles as required. Verify that the flaps are up and the landing gear is up. Identify and verify the dead engine as done under visual conditions. Assuming that your flight path is stabilized and that you are at a safe altitude, troubleshoot the problem. If troubleshooting does not restore engine power, feather and secure the engine. Utilize your pre-flight planning and your current aircraft performance to determine your best course of action. Continuing to your destination should not be a priority. Actually declaring an emergency will get you all of the assistance that ATC has to offer. If your cruising altitude was above the airplane's single-engine service ceiling, you will be drifting down during this entire process. Your planning should indicate if this will be an issue with regard to being able to maintain required minimum IFR altitudes. If you will remain above the minimum altitudes, you will have more time to determine and implement your best course of action. If drift down will put you at an unsafe altitude or on the ground, you must react much more quickly. Assuming that you will remain at a safe altitude, determine if there are VFR conditions nearby. ATC can help out if you don't recall from your planning. If you can safely proceed to a suitable nearby airport and execute a visual approach, this is often best. If VFR conditions aren't present, it's time to analyze your best instrument approach options. Ideally, you would like to find a suitable airport with an approach that is well above minimums and that will allow a straight-in landing. An approach to minimums on one engine, which will require circling to land on a short runway, stacks the cards against a successful outcome. If you are adequately equipped, a precision or LPV approach to a straight-in landing on a long runway with conditions well above minimums would weigh things in your favor. 
If the single engine ceiling is below ground level and IFR conditions are prevalent, you have an urgent emergency situation with limited options. This emergency would be similar to an engine failure under IFR in a single engine airplane. You might have the advantages of traveling a longer distance and redundant systems on the operating engine. Discussion of options that could lead to a successful outcome in this situation is beyond the scope of this program. The rest of our discussion will assume that a safe altitude can be maintained and that we must fly an instrument approach. An instrument approach with only one engine can be a complicated process. It requires good instrument skills along with good skills as a multi-engine pilot. Judgment must be used to determine if and when to change the configuration of the aircraft. Power settings that work with two engines won't work with one. Like any instrument approach, you need to have a stabilized approach. If you are not ready for the approach when cleared, request a vector to allow you time to set up. It is better to delay the approach while getting ready than to rush the setup. Being unprepared for the approach will decrease your chances of success. Your basic setup for a non-precision approach will be the same on one engine as with two. Complete a before landing checklist prior to reaching the final approach fix, but do not lower the gear or flaps. You may be required to fly the approach at VYSE if that's what's necessary to maintain altitude. If you can fly at your normal approach airspeed and still maintain altitude, this will give you a safety buffer. If your performance is marginal, you may want to delay lowering the landing gear and any flaps until you have the landing assured. Leveling off from any descents will require additional altitude due to your limited power. Plan a sufficient lead. Upon acquiring the runway environment and in a position to land, ensure that the landing gear is locked down. Reduce power and begin a descent to the runway. Establish VREF when the landing is assured and complete the single engine landing. A precision or LPV approach on one engine provides a constant descent angle upon glide slope intercept. This fact, along with lower altitude minima, make these approaches best for an approach with an inoperative engine. As with two engines, complete the before landing checklist prior to glide slope intercept. Defer the landing gear and flaps until an appropriate time. Decide the appropriate time based on the aircraft performance and the conditions of the day. Realize that you may be committing yourself to landing once the gear is down. Also, realize that you may destabilize your once stable approach if you wait too long to lower the gear. If the approach is unsuccessful, a missed approach on one engine can be a very hazardous proposition. You face the same concerns as a go-around with the addition of the instrument environment. You also need to be concerned about any climb gradient requirements for the runway. Like the single engine go-around, the earlier and higher you make the decision for the missed approach, the better the chances for a positive outcome. Better still, find an approach where a missed approach is unlikely. As you can see, an engine failure in the instrument environment will demand a great deal from your skills. If you plan to fly a multi-engine aircraft on instruments, you do need to keep these skills honed. Even the pros require regular practice to stay safe in this environment. To access all the videos in Sporty's multi-engine training course, visit us online at sporties.com courses.